welcome to Inside the Locker Room with your hosts, Coach Casey and Damo. So let's get into today's show. Uh, we've got Coach Johnny Taylor from the Lakeland Magic. He's going to be calling in here in a few minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah Give man. us some background on Johnny so Taylor. So Coach Taylor actually was drafted by the Orlando Magic. I don't know, which is great symmetry there. He uh, yeah. was drafted by the Orlando Magic the same year Tim Duncan was drafted. Yeah, he was uh, in a 1997. Big draft. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tracy McGrady went in that yeah. draft. It was a couple Chauncey yeah. Billups, a yeah. couple good guys that actually went out, big name yeah. guys. Right. He was 17th overall, a um, couple picks behind T Mac. Mm-hmm. Went out, played uh, played his first year. He had Anthony Hardaway on his team. Mm-hmm. Had Coach Chuck Daly mm-hmm. uh, coaching them. So he had, won he a had couple a, of rings with the Pistons, right? Yeah. And he actually coached the Dream Team. Yeah. So he had some some pretty big influences going on for him going into his rookie year. You know, uh, got into the league. Or I would say into the league, but he got into the game a lot more his second year. Yeah. Started a few games, then it started to tailor off for him, and he went off to overseas. Yeah. Uh, but he came back. He came back to University of Tennessee, where mm-hmm. he graduated from, and mm-hmm. got back into coaching. Mm-hmm. And from there, I mean, it, it took off for him. So now he's looking at the Lakeland Magic, and they actually just played a game last night with the West Chess, or excuse me, West. Chester Knicks and they have one again. They won a game, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm I'm excited to talk to him. It's 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 great to be able to have a, a big name like that come on the show. And actually, I think that's Coach Taylor calling in right now. All right, let's go to Coach. All right, so we got Coach Johnny Taylor of the Lakeland Magic on the line. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing well this morning. About yourself? Thank you. Well, I'm doing very well. I'm here with uh, Damo, and you're inside the locker room. Congratulations hey, on doing? the uh, congratulations on the win last night. Oh, yeah, man, that was a nail biter, man. Mm-hmm. We definitely needed that win too, so hopefully we can continue that tonight. So, yeah. so, coach, how do you feel about the Lakeland Magic's uh, season? How do you feel about your chances? Well, I think we have just as good as chances as anybody else. You know, uh, there's like a one or two game difference between the bottom of the pack and the top of the pack. You know yeah. what I mean? So, as long as we can keep guys healthy. And uh, keep playing 500 ball. You know, we'll give ourselves a chance once playoffs start. Once we get a few bodies back. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I wanted to, to jump into the Orlando Magic. Actually, back in uh, 1997, you went 17th overall. Is that correct? Absolutely. All right. So, <laughs> tell me about that. Tell me about the process of going into the NBA draft. You know, man, it was really surreal uh, back then, man. You know, some always wanted to achieve and accomplish and I just remember my senior year got off to a really rocky start but by mid-season our team had really started to pick up man and and my numbers had really started to incline unbeknownst to me that people were already watching me but once we made that tournament run and it was just kind of like snowball downhill from then on man it's like people were calling uh teams were calling they was trying to get me in man and and I had no idea where I was projected at the time until about mm, probably about a month or so before the, uh, before the draft. And it's like, you know, you can go anywhere from the 10th pick to about mid first round. I was like, wow, really? So you so had at that time. It, huh? So you had people actually telling you, all right, you're projected within these top 20 picks. Yeah. It started to come through, through my coaches and through the uh, management firm. I had the time at the time, but they was doing most of the communication. And I had been on about 20 different workouts with different teams. And you know how it is kind of when, when you're playing in the Southern Conference, even though I could have went higher major than I did, it was no, I had to go back there and play, but they don't really see you a whole lot. So when they get a chance to right. see you up close in person, they see they can see your athleticism firsthand. They can see your shooting ability, your, how tall your wings and all those things. They was like, wow, you know, this kid really projects out to be, you know, a little bit more than what we originally thought. So I, my, I started to pick up steam. I went to Chicago and had a great Chicago pre-draft camp. And that's at the time where you where you go to Chicago, that's where you can make your name for yourself. So had a really good Chicago pre-draft camp, man. And after that, it was just a waiting game. So my, my, uh, my question then going into, to the draft, when you, when you got to sit down with the coaches, did they give you any information about what, what they were looking for? Do they have any specific questions? Like, if you're a player coming into the NBA nowadays, what's to be mm-hmm. expected? Well, really, we like high-character people, man. You know, because when you're talking about having somebody on your team 
Uh, we all come from different walks and backgrounds and creed and things like that. So you want somebody that's going to be able to come in and fit with good character that's not going to blow up your locker room, you know, just cause un, unforeseen problems, you know. So that's kind of like the big thing. Mm-hmm. But even when I was sitting down, I remember Doug Collins, he was the Pistons at the time, he just really asked me a lot of personal questions about my family and things I've done, things I wanted to achieve, just kind of trying to get a real feel for who I was as a person. And that's kind of that's, that's kind of the big. I mean, there's a lot of people that can play, but are, are you just really a good person? Are you going to fit well with the chemistry on our team? Or are you going to be that guy that's going to be, you know, a, a butthole and cause problems? Right. That was a that, that was a perfect term for it. <laughs> we're we're on the line with uh, Lakeland Magic coach Johnny Taylor. Uh, coach, this is Coach talking. <laughs> I just uh, yeah. I wanted to I wanted to transition into how you got into coaching. Um, so as uh, I did my research on you, you you basically you got into coaching. You went back to Tennessee where you played, correct? I did. And I did. I, uh, you got ahead. you got in as an, an as an assistant coach or like a um, uh, you know a player coach. How, how'd that work? Yeah, I was a grad assistant. I was uh, looking to transition like most players do, and I called up my alma mater. I wanted to really get involved with my school. And just so happened that Will Wade at the time uh, was coming from VCU and had to go to the head coaching job. He was actually looking to connect with the, the former alumni there. So it was a, it was a meeting of the minds, and, and he brought me in. Um, I left school early uh, when I got drafted, so it allowed me to finish my uh, degree while I started, you know, getting my feet wet with coaching, doing some film, uh, on the court, dealing with the guys a lot. So that's how it originally started. Then I I came home after I finished that up, and then he hired me again the following year as director of player development at VCU. So did you get a chance? I, I also saw that coming into your rookie season, you actually worked with Coach Daly, a coach for the 92 U.S. men's dream team team. Right. So did you uh, daily. did you get to draw on any of his experiences or anything like that? Yeah, a little bit. You know, the probably the one of the biggest things I learned from Chuck Daly is, is that coming in as a young guy, that's not an excuse for you not to be ready. Absolutely. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, Chuck Daly was used to working with veteran seasoned guys who knew what it took to get the job done. He didn't have a lot of patience for foolishness. So with me coming in, being – you know, just as green as I was coming in, he actually stayed on me about that, holding me accountable for my time slot. So, you know, once you come into the league, there's no more college. There's no more – it's like – It's go time. You're grown now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's go time. So you got to be ready. And at the time, I didn't know that it was a business and that I have to conduct myself as a business. They even been investing time and money in me, so I got to be ready to go. So I tell a lot of the guys now, you know, it's – just because you're young, there's no excuse for not being ready. You know, you have to know what you need to know. You need to know it now. And if you don't know it, then you need to spend extra time trying to get it. Coach, I got to ask you, because I've always been curious about this. I'm a, I'm a football guy. So uh, w- where did coaches wearing suits on the sideline come from? Because <laughs> you guys look sharp. You guys look real sharp on the sideline. <laughs> Well, I, I try. You know, I'm just following the trend. It's already been there before me. I don't yeah. think I've ever asked that question. <laughs> but, you know, I tell you what, I like wearing a suit and all, yeah. but it would be nice to put on a nice little little polo and, yeah. and some dockers or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get the just, Belichick just like hoodie. The football guys. I, I, I saw a yeah. couple of coaches back in the 80s and, and even the 90s that, on, in football that still wore suits on the sidelines, but it just seems so impractical. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it, it, it does. Uh, but but in basketball, I mean, you're you're in an air conditioned arena, so I guess <laughs> I guess it's, it's it's more comfortable. But uh, but yeah, you guys look sharp on the sidelines, and I was I was looking at some of your photos, and you look real sharp out there. So. <laughs> well, you know, again, it, it's a business, so yeah. I, I guess that's kind of where it came from. Just being, being a business, you know, we we in our sweats and tights and stuff like that in practice, but when it's game time, it's just like a business, kind of like you go into the office. You know, because all the management, the, G, the GMs, the assistant GMs, all those guys, when they go into the office, they in a suit or they in a button up with some doctors on, like first shoes. So I guess that's kind of where it came from. Right. right. You know, you know, for me, I've been in shorts my whole life, man. So hey, if they change it, I'll be the first one to be with it. Right. Yeah. No, that's how I am. I, I'm I'm a uh, I'm a khaki shorts and polo kind of guy. So. <laughs> yeah, so, man. Real quick, nice yeah. little pair of Air Max. I'm good to go. <laughs> so, coach, uh, t- tell us about how you got involved with uh, the G League. Um, you know, is, is this? 
do, do you see yourself, is this what you want to do? Is this your passion or are you looking to, uh, you know, to get to the next level in the NBA? I would love to get to the next level and yeah. coaching, coaching is my passion because I, I've had the pleasure of working with the Doc Rivers, the Mike D'Antoni, the Chuck Daly that you mentioned before, yeah. Terry Carroll, who's my, uh, junior college coach, Mac McCarthy at UTC, mm-hmm. and all the other coaches I've ran across in my time. And being able to give back what they gave to me, whether it's just knowledge, whether it's just, you know, how to conduct yourself when you come to practice, just being prepared. I really love doing that. And I like seeing guys develop because, again, when I came in my rookie year, you still only played 12 games because I was one of those guys that didn't know what I needed to know when I needed to know it. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Right. So by the by the time I figured it out, you know, like they said, the league will pass you by. And it wasn't yeah. that because I wasn't a good player. I was a pretty darn good player. But it's just you need to know that stuff when you need to know it. So I like educating guys on that. So when I see something, I can address the problem quickly. I tell guys now, hey, man, if you have an issue, bring an issue to me. Let's you and I talk about it. I'm going to give it back to you in a positive manner. And if it needs to go to the head coach, and I'll remix it again to give it to him in a positive manner so everybody's on the same page. And I think I, I picked that up through, oh, I forgot about Mochi in Portland. You know, I think I picked it up, especially from Doc Rivers. He's just like, he's a player's player's coach. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it's just like, you come to practice, hey, man, I don't care what happened last night, man. I probably had something to drink last night, too. But get up and come in here and be ready to go. And if you got an issue, let's sit down and talk about it in the office. After we fix it, get on the same page, and we move forward. Right. right. So, so me coming, I actually, uh, coach, I'm from Chicago, actually. So, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm born and raised. So, I, uh, spent my entire life out at the playgrounds playing with everybody out there. And of course, everyone, you know, shooting the ball, calling themselves Jordan. Yeah. You know? Right. So, and everyone was a guard back then, of course. Uh, hey everybody coming coming into this day and age right now with social media being everything that it is with everybody having access to everyone if you right. had some advice to players right now guys that are out there on the playground that are are that can ball but just don't have the opportunity mm-hmm. right now but they are eyeing things like the G League any developmental league going overseas if you had some advice for those guys what would it be well first and foremost continue to work on your game Reach out to those people that have connections that can possibly get you in the door. Uh, you Use your coaches. If you play for those guys in high school, use your college coach if you play for those guys. Uh, I tell the guys that I was able to coach at UTC and VCU, you know, everybody that you meet is somewhat of importance. Get an email. Get a phone number if you can. Reach out to them, you know, weekly. Reach out to them monthly. Give them an update on how you're doing because all you need is that one opportunity. That one opportunity could be – the chance of a lifetime. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I tell them. Keep working on your game. Don't give up on your dream because this is coming from somebody like myself who was came out of high school not recruited by, any, by anybody. You know, the late bloomer, ended up going NIA Division three, uh black college, hmm. sit out of school for a year, worked third shift. And the same guy that was at UTC that saw me in high school that wanted to send me to JUCO is the same guy that sent me to the one in Iowa and I ended up being uh, been a second team All American with two hundred D one offers. So I, it, ha- it can happen overnight like that. I, I got to dispute that late bloomer. You were seventeenth uh, overall pick, man. That's that's very good. So. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 coming out of high school, so I, I started out as a five ten sophomore, and I graduated as a six six senior. Oh, that helps. You know oh, I mean? oh, yeah, that, that helps. <laughs> that's a growth spurt. Yeah, that's a growth spurt. Yeah. But then after that, I even moved on my freshman year. I went from being 6'6 six, six to 6'8 six, by the time my freshman year started. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, this it's is one of those things where. <laughs> this is before the era of a Yao Ming and things like that. You had a, a shack <laughs> yeah. in the league around yeah. seven feet. And yeah. you, it wasn't right. common to have seven footers dribbling the ball up the court. So 6'8 is pretty big. Exactly. Right? Look, if you if you was anything north of 6'8, six, 6'9, six, you was playing the post. But right. I was blessed. I was able to play outside on the wing. And my coach played me that way, which enabled me to have an opportunity to get drafted so I could play inside and out. So, But that's that's what I would tell them, though, man. It's, we had a kid this year. You know, I just told him, I said, look here, man, you got in this year. You have some film now. Keep working. Reach out to everybody you know. All you need is an opportunity, man. And it could come, as bad as it sounds, you could be one injury away from having your opportunity or somebody to make a wrong decision 
not having good character, and then now you're in that slot. You got to take advantage of that slot. Kind of like Andrew Rousey last night. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Andrew Rousey last night. You know what I mean? I mean, this kid is like the amazing shooter, man. Just out of nowhere. Now he's starting for us, and he had 33 points last night. Wow. You know what I mean? And his first start in the G League. Wow. Wow, that's great. Uh, yeah, so who knows where he's going to go from here? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's and that's why you're you're, you're doing it. That's why you're there, right? Because you want to see these guys um, get to that next level and, and realize their maximum potential. Absolutely. If nothing else, have a long career, make a bunch of money, take right. care of your family. Right. So at the end of the day, you can do turn around and you can give back to the same people or the younger generation that's coming on behind you to watch you. That's the joy I get out of it for yeah. me personally. It, it really brings – I'm in the gym, I feel like I'm 19 again. You know, I'm laughing, talking to the guys, but they, they, they're able to receive information from me, and they, they open their ears and they listen, and they're able to go outside, they're able to go out there on the court and apply it. That, that actually, Coach, that, that brings up a, a, another question because I was curious about this. I, I noticed you like to mix it up with the players in the gym, so you're still at that age where you can kind of <laughs> get in there with the players and play with them. But my question is, is uh, what's that like? Like, do, Are you just blown away with today's athleticism and size and stuff? I mean, I mean, can you hang with these kids in the gym today? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's a good question. Glad you asked that. Now, seriously, uh, for me, I think really if I trained for, you know, two months and just got myself really back in shape, now I'm probably going to hold my own for about 10 to 15 minutes with these guys, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> these guys are still 20 years younger than I am. You know, sure. my time is coming gone, but I like to mix it up with them. I still yeah. speak their language. I'm, I'm still a player. I mean, July, this should be eight years since I retired. And that seems like a long time, but not really. Right. You know, you know, I'm I'm still a player at heart. So the good thing, I know exactly what their bodies are feeling because I played in the original D League for the Roanoke Dazzle back in 2002. Yep. You, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I know exactly what, what they're thinking before they think it. I know what their bodies are going through. You know, that's why I feel like I have a unique quality because, you know, I, I do speak their language so that they feel comfortable with talking to me. So I'm able to actually engage with them more. And it gives gives me a little bit more credibility when I'm trying to get them to run through that brick wall for them. I'm like, hey man, you loafing. You're not giving me your best effort right now. They try to give me an excuse. I just shake my head like, no, I'm not really trying to hear that. Coach, you're right, you're right, you're right. And they go out there and they just get it done. You know, so I, I, that's a lot of reason why I mix it up. Plus, I like being on the court. You know, I'm not ready to fade off to the sunset and grow a man belly and just like shut it down yet. <laughs> so what you're saying <laughs> is that next time you guys are down one, you're just going to check in the game, throw a jersey on, and you got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yep, in my co-hons, I got. It. Just give it to. Them. <laughs> we'll make it happen. And again, Absolutely. just to remind everybody, we're on the line with uh, Lakeland Magic coach Johnny Taylor. Uh, coach, before we let you go, you got any uh, uh, fun, interesting stories? Just one? Anything off the well, top about, of your about about me? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, you know, your your career. Anything? Any memorable uh, moments? You know, from your time on the court, or you know, with the Magic or whatnot. Just something uh, something we can uh, make the fans laugh. Well, I, I tell you what, we, we, see, we're going to need a whole barbecue and probably some, <laughs> some cognac to tell those stories. But the one story I tell the guys I'm talking about, I always joke with them about how well I could play, how athletic I was and whatnot. But I tell them, I said, there was one guy that was a Johnny Taylor, that was Johnny Taylor's kryptonite. And I did not want to see that guy when I was on the court. And that his name is Ron Artest. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Listen. I mean, he was just as big as me, just yeah. as fast, but he was a lot stronger. And yeah. we, I went to training camp with the Bulls, and I'm just running around doing my athletic things. I remember old Bill Cartwright said, he said, man, all you do is run and jump, man, and shoot. He said, you wake your run, run, guy. I said, man, you brain run, run. I don't care nothing about run. I'm, you know, I'm who I am. <laughs> Listen, for the next two days of practice, whenever run, run was on me, you know what I did? I passed the ball. Right. So move to the other side. Yeah, move to the other side. Swing it. <laughs> You know, swing the ball. I tried to post up. By the time I post up on the block, by the time I finished dribbling the ball, I was by the three point line. I tried to dribble, penetrate. You know, he just cut me off every, at every angle. I said, you know what? I'm just going to pass the ball and I'll get it in transition if it comes back to me until Ron sub out. <laughs> then, I, then I'll sub back in. You know, I mean, he was just a nightmare defensively. That's you know what, what I mean? I, I'm, 
That's what everybody says, Coach. I, you're not alone there. I mean, everybody says that that Ron Artest was a nightmare, and I mean, it, six eight is six eight, right? But uh, he he went about six eight two sixty, right? I mean, he was he, he was he, the original he was a six solid eight two sixty, yeah, solid. <laughs> lower lower base was extremely strong, yeah, and you know he was he was gifted. You know, he had those. So at the time, you know, when I was young, I caught it had that old man strength. You know how it is mm-hmm. when you when you was young with your dad, just seemed like he was, or your uncle, just seemed like they were just incredibly strong. Yep. He he had that when he was 19 years old. <laughs> he had old man strength. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm just like, you get the ball, you make a move, and when you strip the ball, he take part of your wrist with it. Yeah, you strong hands. Like Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. It was like <laughs> I just had a tough time dealing with that guy. You know. So in in, in hindsight. The Bulls end up letting me go that year and end up going overseas. I'm like, they probably did the best thing for me because yeah. hell, I probably would have made it nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, he he would have taken years off your career, is what you're saying. <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, or or would have got better, you know. <laughs> yeah. like, anybody else that wasn't Ron Artest, they had to see 30 on a nightly basis. That's, that's You're great. not Ron. I can score on you. That's great, Coach. That's a great story. Uh, listen, Coach, uh, we, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we don't want to hold you up too long, so uh, we'll let you get out of here. But, um, you know, we'll uh, we'll send you a link um, after this is over to the show. Uh, you know, we get everything okay. edited up so you guys can, uh, you know, check it out and see what we got from you. But, um, you know, we really appreciate your time today, and we know you're a busy guy, so uh, we'll let you get back to it. And uh, good luck to uh, you and the Lakeland Magic for the rest of the season. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. You guys, anytime you need me on, just give me a call. I'm always available. That's awesome, Coach. We appreciate it. Catch more original content like this at youtube.com forward slash inside the LR. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.